So we said physical productivity is about three parts. Managing sleep, which we covered yesterday. Managing nutrition, which we covered in the first half an hour this morning. And now managing fitness. Okay. People think that they should exercise for their bodies. They think, hey, yeah, I need to look good, feel, you know, have you know, muscles for the guys and for the ladies, and they look good. But you don't exercise for your body. You're exercising for your brain. There's a book that's called Spark, The New Science of Exercise in the Brain. And if you find just the amount of evidence that shows how exercise helps the brain with memory, with studying, with you know, intelligence, all these things, all of us will go walking, running right now. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable that you don't exercise for your body, you exercise for your brain. So don't think, oh man, I've been, I'm going to the gym, I don't see effect, I still have a flab. It doesn't matter. The fact is you need to exercise. You say, oh, I, you know, I try but I don't lose weight. It's not the point of losing weight. The point is you need to exercise for your brain. There was a student, there's a group of students who are failing in the high school in the United States. They took this group of students and they asked them to run one mile every morning before they start classes. At the end of the year, all of them got great, you know, passed with high grades. Just by one mile run, nothing else changed their lives. By running one mile every morning before school starts. And for those of you who have schools, having those morning fitness PE time is very important. Kids need a place to run, to play. It is for their brain, not for their bodies. We need to change this perception that exercise is for our bodies. It's not, it's for our brains. Yes, our bodies of course will get better if we exercise more, but primarily for your brain. The reason why I say this is because I don't want any more excuses. The excuse, I don't have time. Excuse number two, I can't afford it. I want to go to the gym, I can't afford it. Number three, I can't commit. So tell me, how are we going to bust these excuses? Anybody? How are we going to bust? I want an excuse buster. Want, if someone says, I don't have time, what do you say to them? Sorry? Create time. Create time. Create time. <laughs> Manage time included. Okay. I can't afford it. I don't want to go to the gym. You don't need to go to the gym. You can do it anywhere else. Go outside. I can't commit. I start, but I can't commit. Have, oh, fine. Great one. Find a carbon partner. That's it. Find a carbon partner. You can think about excuses you give yourself. Again, you remember yesterday I said slipping point, excuses. What excuse are you giving to yourself? And ask yourself how these excuses affecting, you know, stopping you from exercising. So, you can have daily exercise that are not even related to any sports or any gym. You can just, if, you, if you're working in an office, you can park somewhere far and walk. Just something simple. You can just go park somewhere far and just walk to your office. Somewhere a bit of distance. It could be like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but somewhere a bit far than normal. You can take the stairs through the elevator. Again, if you, again, if you have a high building, it's 4, 15 floors, maybe not. But at least, you know, 5 floors, 10 floors, 7 floors. You build exercise. You can break up your day by saying, okay, I'll work for, let's say, for 2 hours. Then at 10 o'clock, I'll go for a 10 minute walk. Then if I have time at lunch break, I'll take another 10, 10 minutes walk. And then in the afternoon before I end of work, I go for another 10 minutes walk. Something simple, very, very easy. You can play with the children, run after them, they run after you, right? Play with the children and siblings, even for an hour in the evening. So you don't have to think of sports, you don't have to make it like a big deal. It's something as simple as walking extra, even if you walk. Now, the question I normally get is, how much exercise? How much exercise recommended for me to stay physically fit, for my brain to be healthy? Now. The recommended amount is 150 minutes per week of moderate exercising. I need a volunteer. I, sorry. Okay. So I want you to um, just run up and jog lightly. Up and down. Keep going for a while. So 150 minutes per week of moderate exercising. That means that, you know, keep going. Your breathing is quickening. Yeah. You're not out of breath. You know, out of breath? Okay. Can you talk? Yes. Can you say something? Yes. Can you sing? Okay, excellent. Okay. So you can carry conversation. Oh, so you shouldn't be able to sing. You can't sing. So run a bit more, further. Okay, a bit further, a bit, bit faster. You should be able to sing. Start singing. You can still sing, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Round of applause, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, basically, that's the idea. The idea is that it's a moderate exercise. It's not intense. 
Sorry? No. Oh, sorry, yeah, please go ahead, please. Sorry. Someone come up to that? Please, uh, for those of us that are putting our bags on the chairs, we are got a music that some of us are putting back on the chairs. Kindly please remove it for those people who are coming to have a seat. This place looks somehow choked, but we have to prepare for 420 seats, and I'm not sure we have to do that. Please kindly create more space for those who are coming. Thank you. Thanks. So, Hannah basically, so if you want to know how much you exercise, you should exercise like the brother did, 150 minutes per week. How much is that per day? Nope. 20 something, right? So 20 minutes a day. So even if that means 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening of very light, moderate exercise, where he's starting to sweat slightly, he's not out of breath, you can talk but can't really, carry, can't really sing, that is the level you want to be at, called moderate exercise. Now, if you want to become really scientific and give like this heart rate monitors, uh, how old are you? I'm sorry, I'm picking on you again. 40 plus, mashallah, you, you don't look 40, mashallah. Okay, so it's 220, thanks for calculation, make it easier. 220 minus 40 is what? 180. 180 is the maximum heart rate that his heart should be pounding when he's at his most intense. So he needs to exercise at 50% of that. That means heart should be around 100, 190, 100, that's where your heart should be. So that means when he's jogging lightly, his heart is pounding at about 100 rates you know, 100 rates in that, in that, in that same per, per minute or per second. So you want to be at that level. Now, if you want to go a bit higher, you can go intense exercise. Should I start intense? No. <laughs> no, intense is really means you are basically going all out. It means proper, proper run, but you only do 75 minutes, so there's a discount. You get a discount of 75 minutes if you want to go intense. So your breathing is deep and rapid, you, you're, you're quite sweaty and you can barely talk. That means, you, this means you're jogging really quickly, you're running really quickly. So if you, do, if you play against guys who play football, if you play one football a week, basically 90 minutes, you pretty much got your exercise for the whole week. So this is another way of thinking about it. So when you think how much exercise, I don't know, these are good. Either you do something like this, moderate, 20 minutes per day, or you can do half an hour for, for four, five times a day, four, five times a week. Or you can do one intense exercise or do a couple of these intense exercises. Even nowadays, there's something called the seven minute exercise. You heard this one? Seven. Anyone wants to try a seven exercise live on stage? <laughs> do you have a volunteer? All right. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more interesting content, kindly like, share, and subscribe to this channel. See you next time.